399 changed not only my life, she changed many people's lives. I still remember the first time I saw 399, and I knew my neighborhood was changing. There she was, the living symbol of the wilderness. She was so calm, yet so powerful. She just had this other presence. Most bears need a lot of wilderness, a lot of wild land, but not her. She made a territory right here amongst us. She was given the number 399 by a federal biologist who trapped her to study grizzly bears. They number all their study animals in sequence. About the same time that I started watching 399, wildlife managers were thinking about taking the grizzly off of the endangered species list, which would mean that they would be subject to hunting, just like all the other wildlife in Wyoming. I used to build homes in Jackson, but once I started seeing her, I felt compelled to be out here all the time. When I was home, I was wondering what she was doing. She was my insight into another world, and I always wanted to understand that better. Ten years ago, Grand Teton National Park was known as a place of majestic mountains. Moose and massive elk herds that grazed in lush valleys. What it was not known for was grizzly bears. The grizzly had been eradicated from the valley decades earlier and visitors from all over the world headed north through the Tetons to Yellowstone hoping to catch a glimpse of this remarkable but rare animal. When 399 first moved into the meadows near Jackson Lake Junction, people didn't seem to notice much. But for the wildlife in the area, it was a real eye-opener. She awakes alert, always on guard for the scent of danger. It's safer down here in the valley, but she can't let her guard down. These are dangerous times for the cubs. Only one out of three young grizzly bears survived their first year.
The tiny cubs have some big enemies. It's mating season for the bears. And big male grizzlies are roaming the area looking for mates. He wants to breed, and he will kill the cubs of another male in order to do so. Instinctively, 399 heads for the roadside. Somehow she knows the male will not follow her here. There are too many people. Too many strange sounds and smells. She can graze here with the cubs in relative safety. As 399 was moving down into the valley in the springtime, elk were just returning to the Tetons from their winter range. Three ninety nine becomes more visible along the roadside, and the crowds begin to build. Rangers start to spend a lot of time trying to keep bears and people safe. Better get in. Move back. He's sixty four yards out. Move out. Not everybody here. <laughs> they're about 90 right now. What's the minimum of distance before you start putting people back in their cars? Actually, 100. It's 100 is the distance you're supposed to stay away from them. Um, sometimes it's not always possible, <laughs> as it seems now. Um, but if they do come towards the road any further, back it up. <laughs> Just be careful of traffic, please. Oh, it's getting up. I really want to be up here for you. I see him. I think I see him. You got yeah. This is just making my vacation. I can't see it now. Oh, it's Did you see him? Yeah. Yeah, I see one of them just on the back end. Straight down on there. I'm going to move him. 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 I don't have a focus. He's behind there. We were there for a while. We had a great view, but then the grizzly bear left, so we decided to kind of drive along here to see if we could uh, catch a glimpse of it, and it starts walking out right in front of our car. It was just a, a spectacular sight. I mean, it's something I'm going to remember for the rest of my life, and I'm certain my mom is going to remember, too. I mean, there's there's nothing like it, it, especially when it's in person. I mean, it's one thing to watch it on a video, but it's an incredible in person. It's a privilege to be able to come out here and see them and see, I just go home and think about them. I can't stop thinking about them. Yeah, I worry fine. about them. One day I saw 399 out in Willow Flats, and she seemed nervous. Then I noticed there were only two cubs. She kept looking back, and I wasn't sure if she was looking for the other cub or if she thought she was being followed.
elk have begun migrating as snow comes to the valley. The annual cull of the elk is underway. It lures 399 to the southern end of the park, close to town and danger. They call it a hunt, but it's more like a slaughter, and many wounded elk wander off to die, slowly. The lost elk are a great food source for the bears, but there's a big danger of them being shot while feeding in the hunt area. The hunt is over now, and the park is quiet. Most of the wildlife has migrated south for the winter. But the bears are headed north, through the deep snow, to the den. 